everybody, I just want to uh, give you a brief tutorial on how to use um, Molecular Maya uh, in Maya. Uh, so Molecular Maya is a plugin that's freely available, provided by a company called Clarify. And so you can go to clarify.com and download this yourself. Now, if we, I'm logged in already. So if we go under tools here, a moment to go so clarifies the home of molecular Maya so this is free uh, but they have other tools that you can use so if we go to learn more here um, you can download molecular Maya and I'm going to do this because let me just pop over to Maya I'm in Maya 2020 and I don't have molecular Maya installed because it's just recently become available for 2020 in the past we've had to use it in uh, 2019 before that 2018 and so on so it, it it lags a little behind the uh, development of new versions of Maya, understandably, because they have to update it to match what Autodesk has changed. So I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions here and download Molecular Maya. Okay, and then to run Molecular Maya, actually, I'm just going to... Uh, I've got it in my download folder, so I can just go to Open and navigate to that. I think that is just on my F drive here. And yeah, so I'm going to my install. So it actually is a Maya file itself. So you just have to run it like a normal file and you'll get a dialog box. And you just have to follow all the defaults. So we'll just start this and then you have to be able to sign in. And here, just use recommended. You can change this if you need to install it somewhere else, but um, I'm not sure exactly how, what paths it needs, so I recommend using the defaults here. Then we can boot Molecular Maya now. Okay, so here it comes as, a, as an editor. So this should show up every time you launch Maya now, and. So you'll know Molecular Maya is installed and is um, loaded if you see the molecular representation up here in the corner. And if you don't see it and you have installed it already, just like any other plugin for Maya, you go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, um, Plugin Manager, and then you can just navigate to see where it is. So here it is at the top for me, M Maya density of fluid. So all these MI, these are molecular Maya tools, and you can apply it to all. And you can also say auto load to make sure that it will install, it will load it up every time you launch Maya. <clears throat> so if you want to use uh, molecular Maya, and you've launched it, the first thing to do is go to the PDB import. So we can import if we have something already on our machine. And um, there are some defaults in here. One I just recently downloaded is at the bottom. Uh, but there are some defaults uh, to sample things you can look at. So there's one AO1 or AOI. Um, so if we want to see what that is, we can go to the protein uh, databank and search for that one. What was it? One AOI. Nucleosome, right, okay, so that's good. So we can take a look at something like that. Um, or if you want to download something specific that you found on the protein data, the cough to spike. And so we can look at the angiotensin converting enzyme too. So the stuff that these coronaviruses, the spikes seem to bind to. So the PDB entry 6M17. So if we find something we want, we can type it in here. I've already done this one, so I know it works. <clears throat> and we can say, so something like this, so pretty complex structure here with a number of chains. And we can see in the outliner that if we open this up, we can see that it's made up 
of this thing, the PDB molecular structure with the name. The model is the child of that, and then each chain is its own subgroup. Terminals, and things like that. So um, you'll notice that if I go to move mode, we can't actually move this because um, this is uh, actually a made up of a bunch of particle systems. So these are all particles with instance geometry for the different atoms, carbons, oxygens, and so on, hydrogens, and so on, everything you can find in here. Um, so if we do want to move this around, we could group it again. Um, this, this could end up breaking the molecule, but if you just need it in this form, you can do that. You could also select the top level node and unlock. So I just so you can see there's this gray bar going down here. Each of these attributes is locked right now. So if we unlock these, hit W, then we should be able to move it around. So if you need to move it, that is possible. I'm not 100% sure what it does to the model if it breaks any internal structures here. But if you just need it in this form, you can do that. I'm going to undo. So if we go back to the molecular Maya editor, if we have this deselected, we only have the create tab here. But if we select the group node at the top, we see all the chains. And now we have this tab for the PDB edit. So there are a number of things you can do here. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in all of this stuff, but I'll just walk you through the different things and you can take a look. So by default, the atomic structure is showing. And so we can turn off atom visibility. And if that's turned off, then there's nothing to see. Um, we can display a CPK as a cloud, electron, noise, um, ball and stick, and so on. And these things are renderable. And now if we go to the Arnold render view, I've noticed that sometimes it, it, it bugs out a little bit and it looks like it's doing it again. Yeah, we get this kind of thing where it keeps rewriting and never finishing the render. So instead of going to Arnold, open Arnold render view here in the shelf or the status line, we can click on this clapboard with the eyeball icon. And if we render here, this is not a progressive render. This is called a bucket renderer. So it's doing whole regions at once, but you can see it actually can render. Um, but if you don't want to see the atoms or if you want to see the atoms with other things you can also turn on backbone visibility here and so this is actually a surface and you can display the resolution medium high and so on so if you wanted to remove these from the uh, from molecular maya and just have them as objects you can click on ex extract selected chain ribbon or ribbons so the ones you have selected here Will just become models so if i click on this now you can see we have a, a new structure down here and if i just hide my initial one that i brought in then we have this structure here but it's it's brought in as curves so and they're separate curves though but as you know we can select these curves and we could go to arnold curve collector and you know put a shader on here or it could do them separately so if we go into Arnold shader AI standard surface preset blood let's say and then in the curve collector we have to make these renderable oops pick thickness of two and then if we try to render this let's see if the Arnold render view will work here so um, when I first rendered this you saw that it didn't match the shape of the curves at all and that's because in the curve collector the sample rate was uh, set to too low a value and there's so many curves here with such complexity um, it's not doing what it needs to do. So it's not sampling the curves often enough to pick out the detailed structure. So in the curve collector, we could turn that up to higher value, you know, until it's matching more closely. The more you do, the longer it'll take to render. But here at 500, you can see it's matching it pretty well. 
anyway, so this these curves can be rendered, and now they're separate from the um, the original protein uh, data bank model that was imported. Again, if we go back into molecular Maya, I've got backbone visibility turned on. Turn that off. You can also bring in biological units. So if you bring in a subunit from something and you know that there is a, a known structure, um, then that can sometimes be downloaded from the PDB. Yep. And then also we can render at the surface of this model. So if we want a surface representation, we have to turn on mesh visibility. And we get something like this. And you can see the separate chains are rendered as separate objects with different uh, materials. But you can change certain things here. So this is a pretty blobby representation of these chains here. Um, and you can get a higher quality result, so more detail, um, by turning down the resolution. Let's see if I've got that right. Don't use the slider here. It's sure to crash because it has to recalculate on every increment. So it's better to type in values. And let's say I go down to three. So it's thinking, and you can tell by the way it's thinking that it must be a, uh, more detailed. So the higher the resolution, or sorry, the lower the resolution setting, the higher the amount of detail. And this has to do with uh, the radius of a probe uh, and how much of the atomic surface it can detect here. So lower value, narrower probe, shows more detail but there are presets here so for example if we go to the low preset now we get a very rough model but this might be suitable for what you need just especially if it's something in the background you know if it's this far away from the camera you don't need all of that detail so you can uh, create a, a rougher surface representation um, we can go to medium right so something like that where we're seeing a little bit more so how do you use this well just in the same way that you could export or extract the backbone as a, a series of curves, in the uh, surface tab here, you can see that we can extract selected chain meshes. So if we extract these, we can say as duplicates. And really, this is typically what you want to do. And then you can see we've got a brand new model here. I'm going to hide the original. And this is what was extracted. You can see it's a group with all these separate pieces of geometry here. And these are just standalone models now. So these can be used in any way you want. Oh, that's interesting. So really, that's all there is to it. Um, it's just an easy way to get models in um, from outside of Maya, typically using the PDB, uh, because that's built into the structure. But you can bring in other other structural data, especially if it's written as a, in a PDB format. So you can, it doesn't have to come directly from the PDB, but if you're working with a researcher that can provide that information for you, then you can import that into Maya using uh, molecular Maya. So that's about it. Give it a try and uh, see how it works for you. Thanks.